Our topic continues with uh, second hypertension. Here, however, we're in the we're in the concept or we're in the topic of endocrine. What does that mean? Well, remember, hypertension crosses all borders. At this point, we've completed secondary hypertension when dealing with the renals, right? And we went through those important differentials. Here, under endocrinology, when we refer to Cushing syndrome, now right off the bat, close your eyes and think about all the different sources in which Cushing's could take place. As soon as you hear about Cushing, take the C in Cushing, please. And you know that you have excess cortisol, right? Excess cortisol, whatever form that may be, glucocorticoids, prednisone, what have you. So here we have Cushing syndrome. What are the four different causes? And as you go through them, tell me as to what is the most important or what is the most common cause of Cushing. It's actually not even from our body. It's exogenous sources. What's that called, please? It's called factitious. It's called iatrogenic. It's exogenous. Do you understand any time that you see those three words, what are they again? Iatrogenic exogenous or factitious. That too should mean that that particular drug, hormone, whatever it may be, is coming from an outside source. Is that clear? I hope so. So that's the most common, isn't it? Think about prednisone and all the different reasons as to why a patient might be taking prednisone. But is that going to give you second hypertension? Well, let's move into this. This is Cushing syndrome. Where am I? Not the anterior pituitary. How do you know? If it was anterior pituitary, would you call this Cushing syndrome? Good. No, you wouldn't. You'd call this Cushing's disease if it was anterior pituitary. So, Dr. Raj, what in the heck are you getting at? If you had a tumor in the adrenal cortex that is producing cortisol, are you only producing cortisol? No. You might also be producing aldosterone. Mm. Now you're getting to my point. What's my topic? Secondary hypertension. Remember, please, in this case, the pathology, the end game is the fact that you're going to develop increased blood pressure. And that increased blood pressure is coming from aldosterone in Cushing syndrome. Take a look at the patient here. The face, moon faces. What are we looking at in this patient's torso? It's the fact that there's trunk obesity and we have striae. What else might you find on the back of the neck, perhaps? You're looking at buffalo hump, right? So that's your patient in general with Cushing because of excess glucocorticoid from whatever source. Just to be complete, the other sources included the anterior pituitary and then also your lung, right? And from the lung, you should be thinking about most commonly small cell lung cancer. Good. Now, my point is this. If you produce too much aldosterone at some point in time, what may happen? You may then cause increase in blood pressure resulting in secondary hypertension. Cushing. Now, be very careful because our next differential here for secondary hypertension. Take a look. We have removed our patient because this is Kahn syndrome. Kahn syndrome was not going to have moon faces, buffalo hump, and so on and so forth, as we just saw. Kahn syndrome is a primary, listen to what I'm saying, it's all about verbiage, it's all about terminology, and if you're not careful about terminology, when you're reading something, it's quite easy for you to miss a question, it might be quite easy for you to misinterpret your patient, you don't want to do that. So, it's a primary hyperaldosteronism. Now, this would mean, what's primary mean to you? It means that that particular problem or pathology is actually taking place from that organ, hmm? Aldosterone comes from there. From where? Adrenal cortex. What layer? Glomerulosa. The most superficial layer. Mm. You have a tumor there that's producing too much aldosterone, right? This is called Kahn syndrome. This is primary hypoaldosteronism causing what kind of hypertension? Ah, if you said primary, I'm sorry. As much as you want to, please know this is not primary. It's secondary hypertension. How common is this? More common than you, one would think. Make sure you know about Kahn's. So in Kahn syndrome, it's a primary hypoaldosteronism with a tumor in your adrenal cortex producing too much aldosterone resulting in what kind of hypertension? Secondary hypertension. Is that clear? Now give me the labs here because you're not done. You're going to be given a sheet of labs and you have to be able to interpret as to your patient having Kahn's. What happens to sodium? Increase. What does that mean? Greater than 145. Good. Good. What about potassium? You're getting rid of it because you have too much aldosterone. So my potassium is less than 3.5. Good. And then what about hydrogen? You're getting rid of your hydrogen. So what happens to your pH? Increases. Welcome to alkalosis. Is that clear? Welcome to cons. This is something we have looked at, we will look at, and will forever look at because it comes up so many different times. Let's continue. Endocrinology. Now we have pheochromocytoma. Where am I? Where are you? You're still in adrenals, but what part, please? The medulla. In the medulla, you might have a tumor. You have a tumor that does what? Produces too much of your epinephrine. Remember, normally speaking, 80% of your epinephrine comes from where? It comes from the adrenal medulla, doesn't it? 80% does. What about epinephrine? Epinephrine works on 
many receptors, catecholamine receptors, alpha-1, alpha-2, beta-1, beta-2, at low doses, works on what? Good, beta. At higher doses, works on alpha, works more like norepinephrine. You know that from form. I've walked through that quickly. Right now, let's just focus upon the path, please. In pheochromocytoma, you have too much epinephrine. And do you have this epinephrine all the time? Is it a constitutive? No, it's episodic. You pay attention to the term episodic, hypertension. If you have too much epinephrine at some point in time, might you find it's metabolites in the urine? Sure you will. What's that called? VMA. Venomendic acid, maybe metanephrine, so on and so forth. This episodic hypertension, headaches, diaphoresis, what's that mean? Remember, too much sympathetic activity. Would you please tell me how you sweat? Is it sympathetic or parasympathetic influence? Sympathetic. Good. Remember one of the big exceptions. Sympathetic muscarinic receptor, diaphoresis. Palpitations. Boom, 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 boom. All of the time? No, no, no. Not like Graves disease. Is that clear? Give yourself a differential. Palpitation, Graves. Here we have pheochroma. Let's continue. Adrenal mass. Where are you? Adrenal medulla. What kind of tumor? It is a benign tumor. What are you going to find? Plasma-free, metanephrins, urine. There it is. VMA, vanilla mandelic acid. What does that mean? It means that these are the metabolites of your epinephrine being broken down. Rule of tens. This is something that we discuss in endocrinology. 10% of the time, it might be sporadic. 10% of the time, it might be familial. 10% of the time, it might be both kidneys that are affected, so on and so forth. What else may result in secondary hypertension when dealing with endocrinology? How about the thyroid gland? If it's hyperthyroidism, it might then increase your systolic blood pressure, SBP. And if it's hypothyroidism, then it might be something like increased diastolic blood pressure. And that's important for you to know clinically, please. Hyper, it's the fact that your patient's heart feels how? Oh, it's palpating. And you have hypothyroidism, increased diastolic blood pressure. Thyroid gland. Let's continue. What about another endocrine pathology that may result in second hypertension, but this is hyperparathyroidism. What is this? This is the fact that you're producing too much, what, PTH. Where? Your parathyroids. Where am I? Right around the thyroids, right? Your thyroid. And you have your parathyroid producing too much PTH. What is that going to do? It's going to run to the kidney. It's going to do what? It's going to reabsorb the calcium. What can affect does calcium have on your blood vessels, please? Think about that. Your blood vessel normally is what kind of muscle? Smooth muscle. What's smooth muscle mean to you? Think about alpha-1. Are you there? Alpha-1. Bring in some biochem here. You have alpha-1 receptors. What does it do? It stimulates your, good, phospholipase C. What are you going to release? IP3, DAG. What are you going to do next? Release calcium. Aha. What does alpha-1 do? to your blood vessel, you know it causes vasoconstriction. So therefore, you have the calcium bind to clomodulin so that you do what? Vasoconstriction. What is that going to do to your TPR? And here we'll go ahead and call this PVR. It increases resistance. Peripheral vascular resistance is going to be increased. Is that going to increase your blood pressure? Sure it will. What kind? Secondary. Are you following me? Everything that we're going to do here is have an explanation, has a story. You relate this to a patient, a presentation, whatnot, you're in good shape. You cannot be fooled. I don't care who you are. You understand your patient. You won't miss a single question, period. You just completed your first video of the world's best medical exam preparation. Lecturio brings the knowledge of worldwide leading medical experts and teaching award winners to your PC, tablet, or smartphone. Prepare yourself and check your progress with thousands of quiz questions customized to US MLE standards. And the very best you can get in touch with our medical experts personally. Visit Lecturio.com now and continue with the most inspiring medical education around the globe, anytime, anywhere.